Welcome to Aston Means Business, SMEs Adapting to COVID-19 Challenges. I'm Steve Dyson, the journalist presenting this regular podcast for Aston Business School. We're interviewing small business leaders who've been involved in Aston Centre for Growth's projects. We're giving them a voice to discuss their challenges, share their experiences and explain how they are coping with the pandemic. We're also talking to a range of experts, either those working for or with links to Aston Business School, getting their valuable insight, analysis and advice for SMEs. In today's episode, we're going to find out how one Midlands manufacturer called Metal Assemblies is coping with COVID-19 and how it's planning that a new knowledge transfer partnership with Aston Business School will increase their profits in the future. We're also going to talk to Professor Ben Clegg, the head of the Operations and Information Management Department at Aston Business School. Ben is with me now to listen to my interview with the boss at Metal Assembly. So hello to you, Ben. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, Ben. Good to have you with us. Um, Please bear with us as all recordings are carried out remotely online to make sure we conform to the government's current stay-at-home advice. Joining me online now is Ian Collis, the Managing Director of Metal Assemblies, the automotive supplier based in West Bromwich. Hello to you, Ian. Hi, Stephen. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Thanks very much for joining us today. Um, Ian, tell me a bit more about Metal Assemblies. How long has it been around? What does it produce and for whom? Metal Assembly celebrated its 65th birthday a couple of years ago. Um, we're an automotive stamping supplier, an assembly supplier, uh, mostly at second tier. We supply quite a broad range of manufacturers and cars as, as we're second tier. Um, so we supply Nissan, Honda, Toyota, Maserati, Porsche, Jaguar, Land Rover. Um, so most of the big automotive companies and across most of their model ranges. So how our listeners picture the business, Ian, and how many staff do you have and, and what's the average annual turnover? Um, <laughs> that's an interesting question to answer at the moment. So if I go back to um, March uh, this year, we were employing about 150 people and turning over about eight and a half million pounds. Um, now, following uh, COVID-19, it's a little bit different. Um, so we're currently employing about 90 people. We were impacted uh, on the 23rd of March by COVID-19. Up until the 23rd of March, everything was just uh, you know, going along quite nicely, thank you very much. Mm. But we, we literally hit a brick wall on the 23rd of March. So we went from um, employing, say, 150 odd people um, and producing around about £180,000 worth of turnover a week to nothing in 24 Gosh. hours. That situation continued really through to about the 20th of April when one of our customers said they wanted to go back to work and um, we, we sort of looked at it and worked out how we could support that. Uh, and we had about 10, 10% of our capacity come online again uh, on the 20th of April. And that situation carried on through April and May um, to the beginning of June when we started to see other customers wanting to restart production. And we've now got back to around about 80% of where we were um, when this all started. In terms of the, the, the complete shutdown, what you call the brick wall, how did you cope with that in terms of government assistance or did you have to make people redundant? And when you started back, what measures did you have to bring in to keep people safe? I have to say, in terms of government assist- we, assistance, we, we can't fault it. It's been superb. Um, you know, they, they, they put in place the furlough scheme, so that, that meant that we could furlough our staff. Um, so we, we furloughed um, everybody apart from five people um, for uh, the first sort of five weeks. And as I said, we, we started to bring people back gradually from there. The, the other thing that helped Metal Assemblies is we, we historically have had um, around about 30% of our staff as temporary co- on temporary contracts. That's something that we did following the 2008 crisis um, mm. because it enables us to flex labour up and down very quickly. Mm. Um, so we were able to... Um, one, stop the temporary staff, and two, make use of the furlough scheme, which, which helped tremendously. Um, then we had a lot of support from our bank. We, we banked with RBS, um, and I have to say that they were magnificent. Um, a, a lot of uh, peers and, and friends that I've got that run businesses were, were pulling their hair out trying to sort out uh, civil loans and extensions to overdrafts. Uh, I actually didn't have to contact the bank. They just contacted me and said, look, we'll sort this out. Don't worry. Um, just carry on in normal as we do it. And That's so really good. That's really good. So yeah, so, yeah RBS w- were absolutely superb, um, and that, that was uh, it made my life an awful lot easier. That's for certain. And when you were bringing people back, what kind of measures did you have to bring in? 
we have a one-way system in the factory. Everyone has to wear visors. Um, we social distance. The canteens are closed. Um, we we don't allow people to congregate in um, in areas. We ask them to um, you know eat eat their, their food at the machines. Um, we don't allow meetings anymore. So all the meetings in the factory are, are done over uh, Teams or Zoom. Um, we have one room in the factory which is designated a meeting room for where we have to have face-to-face -face meetings. But we don't allow any more than four people in that room at a time. And whenever it's used, it's immediately sanitized. Um, we have an email list. So we, we have a, a company-wide email list now, um, not company emails, but private emails, so that we can, can communicate with all the staff and just let them know what's going on. And that was really useful during, during the time that we had people at work and people were furloughed. Um, we were able to send out sort of weekly briefings, just letting people know what's going on and how we're coping and what we need to do and what we'd like them to do. And again, the, the, the employees that we have have been absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, they, they have risen to every challenge that we've, we've sort of sat down and discussed with them and said, look, we need to do this, we need to do that. And, and almost without exception, um, that everybody has gone along with it and supported the business. And that, that's been, again, a, a huge weight off of my mind because it, it's meant that we can make decisions and, and understand that our employees are going to follow those decisions and go along with it. So that's why I was really pleased that from the 1st of September, we actually had everybody back off of furlough and everybody back on five-day week working. Sounds really good. And, and as you were saying, in terms of your trade, um, you're back up to around about 80%. So obviously some of the temporary staff haven't come back. But that 80%, it's hard to predict the future, but how do you think it's going to go? What, what are your feelings in terms of the industry and demand as, as people start to come out of the lockdown? Uh, that's the $64,000 question at the moment, Steve. Um, mm. As you say, it's, it's so difficult to predict um, because literally things are changing every day. Um, at the moment, I think we're reasonably comfortable that um, October and November will continue on an even keel um, because the, the demand pipeline is there. Mm. What we can't predict is what's going to happen in December. December is, a, is historically a quieter month anyway because we run into Christmas. Um, but uh, obviously a lot of the big corporates have their end of financial year at the end of December, which means that they want to destock or they want to improve their cash position. Um, so we think that's probably going to be exacerbated this year. Uh, because of COVID and everyone trying to patch up their balance sheets. So mm. we are very nervous about what's going to happen in December and how much of a reduction in demand we're going to see. But we, we're too far away from it at the moment to, to really have a good feel for what's going to happen. Before COVID happened, I understand that Metal Assemblies was uh, talking to Aston Business School about a new knowledge transfer partnership. Um, what's the reason for what's known as a KTP and how do you hope it will help the company's future? We came across KTP a little bit by accident and spoke to Aston University. And what, what impressed us is that they basically were going to embed themselves in, into the business um, and make sure that the knowledge that we gained was transferred to us. So when it all came to an end, that, that we didn't lose the knowledge. And that was very un unusual compared to the other sort of options that we were looking at. Uh, so we, we sort of ex we, ex we sat down and had a long chat with Aston University, and, and they expanded on what it was they want, they wanted to do. Uh, and to be honest with you, within half an hour of that first um, meeting, we were sold, um, simply because they have such a breadth of experience in terms of dealing with business and dealing with manufacturing, uh, and the ideas that they had um, were were in tandem with exactly what we were thinking. How will the KTP work at Metal Assemblies? What exactly is it going to do to you? And what would be the benefits? Metal Assemblies is, is um, very much a traditional um, manufacturing business. So we have robots and we have CNC machining centres and we have a, an ERP system. Um, but what none of those things do very well is talk to each other. So we still rely an awful lot on manual data mining. So we you know somebody literally has to sit there and go through things to try and work out patterns and trends. Mm. Um, and and that's, that's very labour intensive. Um, and it means that the business is slow to react sometimes or it, it goes off in a, a wrong direction because we don't interpret the data properly. Mm. So what we want to do at Metal Assemblies is, is obviously to, to introduce fourth generation um, industry, which everyone you know, talks about and says, what on earth is that really? Uh, and I, we see it as, as just a means of communication, of making sure the business in its entirety is communicating with itself. Um, so what we're looking to do with Aston University is, is to create um, a, an environment where the machines talk to each other 
and let us know what's going on without an awful lot of human intervention uh, because obviously machines can mine data very very quickly but for a, an OES so a small business like Metal Assemblies and SME to do that it, it's quite challenging without support because we just don't have the specialisms within the business required and if we tried to go and buy it uh, the cost would be prohibitive what Aston University is, is going to do is, is embed an employee with us for two years um, who is going to have the responsibility of running that project um, and that, that employee will, will, will run the project in conjunction with our operations director and myself um, to, to make sure that the knowledge we gain is embedded into the business. It'll be hardware solutions and software solutions, but also the, the, the systems that we use. Um, it'll be the training of the staff to, to make sure they understand how the systems work and why we're doing it. So it really is a, a business-wide change, uh, a step change for, for the business. Metal Assemblies has been uh, fortunate in that we've, we've won a lot of new business over the last 12 months that starts production um, next year and uh, the beginning of 2022. Um, and if we don't go down this route, then the alternative would be for us to have to put more machines in place. And we, we don't want to do that because that's very capital intensive. So what we need to do is to improve the effectiveness of our equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and so that the way to do that is to use technology to, to make us more efficient. So, so what that technology will enable us to do is, is just to make better decisions. So the, 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 the people in the business that are, that are having to make those decisions will be able to make them armed with a whole range of information that, that is real time as opposed to uh, two or three days after the event. Um, so the way the process works at the moment is the customer will send us a schedule, we'll process that schedule through our system, and then we'll review it and, and have a look at what that means to the capacities, um, have a look and see what that means to our stock, what that means to our, our goods coming into us. Um, all that goes into a big melting pot and out comes a production plan. But that's a, that's a process that takes two or three days and is ongoing all the time. If we can uh, automate that and, and have real-time decisions, any change to a customer schedule will automatically be reflected in the production plan. Mm. Uh, and so the, the benefit to us means that, that we make the right decisions in terms of the, the parts that we make. So we don't have as much downtime through machine changeover, um, or we run the right number of parts, we make the right left hand instead of the, instead of the right hand part. All those things are what add up to inefficiency in our business. So you're saving time, maximizing your resources, and the result is increasing profits, I guess. That's the plan, yes. <laughs> that, would be a nice, that would be a nice outcome. <laughs> You say the plan because the KTP is set to start. Am I right in thinking it's next year? Yes, we, we're set to start it on the 1st of January. So the, the way the KTP works is once we've all agreed um, the project and it's been signed off by Innovate UK, um, who are the, the, the funders behind this, Aston University then advertise for the person to, to come and work for us. Um, and that takes obviously a bit of time to put in place. Um, and obviously with the Christmas period coming up as well, we've decided the best time to start this would be the 1st of January. So hopefully from the 1st of January, we'll have the, the, the right person in the business working for us. And then we've got a two year run of it to, um, to implement all these new changes. How much will it cost the KTP? Um, so the, the, um, the budget for the KTP initially is £200,000 over, over two years. As I said, uh, two thirds of that is covered by um, Innovate UK and a third of it is covered by Metal Assemblies. Um, but that budget doesn't necessarily include any um, new equipment that we might want to put in. So if, you know, if we see some sort of clever monitoring system um, or you know, those sort of things will be extra. Your initial plans for the KTP predate COVID-19, but in the wake of the pandemic, how crucial do you think the KTP could become to help a company successfully emerge in what's going to be a changing world economy in 2021? I think it's, it's absolutely vital for the business. Um, we, we have to become more efficient um, because the, the, the drive to reduce cost is, is ever present. Ian Collis, Managing Director of Metal Assemblies, many thanks for joining us and best wishes to you and your workforce as you enter into your new KTP with Aston Business School. Thank you very much. Listening to my interview with Ian Collis was Professor Ben Clegg of Aston Business School. Hi again, Ben. Are you still there? Hi. Hello. Yes. Ben, you're head of Aston Business School's Operations and Information Management Department. What does your department do and how is it involved with industry? Yep. So we are a department of about 50 academics, about uh, 20 visiting staff and about 30 PhD students. So we're a, a big, large department and we specialise 
in operations and supply chain management with particular interest in things like productivity, sustainability, and lean thinking. We also look at IT and IS management, particular interests in cybersecurity. We also specialize in quantitative analysis with particular interest in things like big data and data analysis. We also look at things like systems thinking, simulation of various types to processes, business processes, productivity. And also we look at advanced services for manufacturing to look at how manufacturers can move from being purely a product provider into a product and service provider. I understand. And and although you're academics, uh, you're quite practical in terms of getting involved with industry to assist them with your knowledge. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So operations supply chain is a very practical subject by definition. We're not looking at abstract theory or concepts, although we are theoretically grounded and take uh, inspiration from a lot of best practice published in the academic world. But really what we what we like to do, the kind of people we have in a department are people who love to work with industry. So we do lots of applied research in things like KTPs, uh, applied PhDs. We also do some kind of academic research in terms of literature development. Um, and we also develop a lot of uh, develop and deliver a lot of short courses to industry in things like cybersecurity, servitization, big data analysis, uh, and that type of thing. So for us, we thrive on the challenge of bringing wider academic knowledge and practice into companies and organizations to create impact for those organizations. That certainly does sound very practical. Now, one of the companies you're about to work with um, via a knowledge transfer partnership, what we call KTPs, um, is Metal Assemblies, who we've just uh, interviewed the manager director, Ian Collis, at. Now, what will be Aston's role and how do you see that benefit in the company? Yeah, so what Aston will bring to this project is, is a number of things. So, for instance, in terms of management practice, it'll bring new ideas, new tools and methods. So if I just mention a few of these, they're going to be things like the business canvas tool, the pro modeling approach, um, different ways of data management, new approaches to automation of data analysis. But we're also more broadly, we'll act as a change catalyst and we will have objectivity that we can bring into the company as we're not employed by the company. We're, not, we're also not consultants, so we're not here just to make money. What we're really trying to do is to, uh, as a KTP suggests, is to transfer wider knowledge into a company to make them work more efficiently, more productively. And then also the knowledge exchanges is a two-way process. So the academics and the associate involved in the project uh, learn about practical experiences, in this case, the automotive industry, um, the challenges of managing real production in real time. And that knowledge comes back into the university and we use it in teaching to our students. So our students get a more relevant and rigorous education. Now, we heard Ian Collins talking about the backgrounds of the company. What was it that attracted you to work with Metal Assemblies? Yeah, so um, Metal Assemblies is a fantastic company because it is working in the first and second tier of automotive supply chains. It has um, globally well-known customers. And the idea of working with a medium-sized company is that you can really make a lot of change within one to two years. Um, unlike working with a larger company where you may struggle to make a, uh, a large noticeable change, MAL, Metal Assemblies, um, you know, has a good level of production readiness, uh, technology already adopted into the company, and they understand that they've got to get better. And so I think we're looking for a company that has a certain level of technology ready, but has great ambition 
to do better more quickly and has enthusiasm for doing that. So that's what really struck us about metal assemblies. We were listening to Ian Collis um, talking and he talked about the the student or the postgraduate student that you're going to place with metal assemblies as part of the KTP. So what kind of um, level of student you're looking for and, and how will they get involved? Yeah, so this will be a recent graduate and it might be um, from a, an undergraduate degree or it could be master's or even an, from a PhD level. So we're looking somebody who's got a maybe a couple of years experience, uh, a recent graduate and really wants to get stuck in to a real project where they have some influence. So we're looking for someone who's ambitious, someone who's got a, a technical background but wants to also develop some management skills and may well in the future go on to being a consultant in IT or change management or um, production engineering. It's that type of ambitious person that we're looking for. Professor Ben Clegg, Head of Aston Business Schools Operations and Information Management Department. Many thanks for joining Aston Means Business today. Thanks also to Ian Collis, the Managing Director of Metal Assemblies. Hopefully what they both had to say about KTPs will help other leaders of SMEs to understand how universities can assist industry. Now, as we heard, the KTP between Metal Assemblies and Aston Business School is being part funded by Innovate UK. This is the national agency that aims to accelerate economic growth by stimulating and supporting business-led innovation. Eva Block is the Innovate UK's regional manager in the West Midlands, and she's joining me online now. Hello, Eva. Hello, Steve. Uh, Eva, what was it about Metal Assemblies and Aston Business School's partnership that prompted you to get involved? A number of things. It's a very interesting project, and I think one of the key elements of, of, of that is the, is the fact that Metal Assemblies represents a lot of the companies that we see on a daily basis in the West Midlands. So traditional uh, business in quite a traditional sector, perhaps initially not considering that innovation is something that they would ever get involved in. And, and these are the most exciting cases for us. Aston Business School is uh, our most successful university in terms of KCPs in the region. You're doing fantastically well. So uh, congratulations, and I'm sure there's much more you can do. What are the supports does Innovate UK offer to businesses? There's, a, there's two kinds of support that we offer. Obviously, funding is the, the support that most people associate us with. And that's, that includes larger projects and smaller projects. So anything from a KTP, for example, to small feasibility studies, industrial types of uh, research, but also demonstration, larger projects, demonstration projects, uh, which include supply chain collaborations, very often supply chain collaborations. Um, so that's the funding element. Um, we also provide business support through our networks, such as Knowledge Transfer Network, um, Enterprise Europe Network, and the network of catapults uh, spread across the country. And that business support in particular nowadays in the post-COVID world is, is specifically designed to help build resilience and growth planning to help companies pivot now and in the future. If businesses are interested in potential KTP solutions or other approaches to solving their problems, who can they contact at Innovate UK to look into this? We have a um, customer service line, uh, support at innovateukri.org. Um, I would also encourage people to get in contact with myself. And my email address is ewa.bloch at innovateuk.ukri.org. Eva Bloch, Innovate UK's Regional Manager in the West Midlands. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Pleasure. This is the last episode in our second series of Aston Means Business, but we'll be back soon with a new episode looking at how SMEs are building their resilience to COVID-19 challenges. Aston Means Business. Thanks for listening.